this will be a perfect science class to teach to nobody because it's a pretty dry and boring topic. So if you're watching this on YouTube, blown away. All right, so uh, today's lesson, so we're, we've got a couple more little segments of uh, science practices to go through, which is just an, another way of talking about the different types of questions and the different material that you might expect to see on the science test. So talk a little bit of today about the various um, ways they'll present information. So you know you need to be expected to answer questions based on science passages, uh, visual graphics, formulas, and even equations. So that's kind of what we'll talk about today. Tomorrow we'll talk about uh, some of the statistics that you might see and a little and talk a little bit about the, some of the math you might see on the, the science test. And then um, Wednesday and Thursday, we'll kind of do some review and get ready to kind of move on to um, back to some more additional science content where we're talking about the most specific. Um, but with that said, I'll do a quick little lesson on this, uh, and I'm going to just gonna, I'm going to go ahead and skip down um, to just the, kind of the practice questions and walk us through. Um, some different types of questions you might see. These four example questions all deal with the same passage, but as you can see, they, they present information in different ways, and all the questions kind of ask uh, something differently uh, and require some different skills to be able to answer. So I'll go ahead and start by just reading the passage uh, and go from there. So the passage says, Imagine a substance, such as salt, dissolved in a liquid, such as water or alcohol. The liquid in which the substance is dissolved is called the solvent. Osmosis is the diffusion or movement of a solution across a semi permeable membrane or a barrier that allows some substances to pass through. The solvent moves from the side of the membrane with less dissolved material to the side of the membrane with more dissolved material. The result of osmosis is equilibrium, the state at which the rate, the state in which the rate at which the solvent flows across the membrane at the same rate in both directions. Okay, so pretty wordy, lots of vocab. Uh, let's break some of that down. So first of all, he's saying that. A solvent is just a solution that something is dissolved, right? So if we take salt and we pour it into the water and we stir it around until the salt dissolves, the water would be considered the solvent, right? Salt is what we're dissolving. Okay? Now it also says it talks about osmosis. So osmosis is just saying that naturally things will diffuse or move from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. And the way they word it here is, is misleading or confusing because it says the solvent moves from a side of the membrane with less dissolved to a side of the membrane with more dissolved. Okay. That means if there is less dissolved sugar on one side and more dissolved sugar on the other, right, it's going to move back and forth until both sides have the same amount of dissolved sugar. So let's go through these questions because as confusing as that paragraph was, we don't, all, we don't have to perfect, perfectly understand everything in the passage to be able to answer these questions. So let's, let's keep reading. So it says, Jillian conducted an experiment to see how quickly various liquids with a specific amount of sugar dissolved in them would undergo osmosis. In other words, how long it would take the solutions to dissolve and reach equilibrium. In other words, the point at which both sides are the same. Right? She used vats of the same size with semi-permeable membranes separating one side of the vat from the other and took equal quantities of various liquids in both sides. So here's a picture of the vat, semi-permeable membrane, and the liquids on both sides. So the first question says, Jillian used one of the vats to test the rate of diffusion of liquid acetone in the process of osmosis, what did she most likely put on the two sides of the semi-permeable membrane in that vat? 
So he's trying to test the rate of diffusion of liquid acetate. In other words, how quickly will acetone dissolve sugar and balance out compared to some whatever's on the other side? Okay, so here's our four choices. A is pure acetone on this side, sugar in a glass container submerged in acetone on this side. B, 50% solution of sugar in acetone, and the same, side B. C says pure acetone on side A, and a solution of sugar in acetone on side B, or D, pure acetone on both sides. Okay. So, as confusing as this all is, even if we don't perfectly understand what they're talking about, two that I can eliminate right away are B and D. And the reason is, if we're testing the rate of diffusion of a liquid, one thing we don't want to have is the same exact thing on both sides, because then we can't test anything because equilibrium has already been reached. And so nothing will happen, right? Stuff will diffuse back and forth, but it will do so at an equal rate. And so we, it's like if we had um, salt water on one side and salt water on the other side, if we were testing the rate of diffusion of salt in water, we couldn't test anything because both sides are already equal. So B and D don't make any sense. So it's either going to be A or it's going to be C. And if we look closely at them, A and C, so they both have pure acetone on this side. A says sugar in a glass container submerged in acetone. C says solution of sugar in acetone. Okay. So again, if we're testing the rate of diffusion of sugar, how quickly sugar will dissolve? It's not going to dissolve at all if it's in a glass container. So a is nonsensical, right? So even though we don't have a great idea, maybe, potentially, of what this question is asking, and even what the paragraph is telling us, if we know enough and we can figure enough out to eliminate, first of all, D and B, but then if you can read A and think, this doesn't make sense, why would we want sugar in a glass container submerged in acetone? We want to know how the sugar will dissolve in the acetone. So to do that, we want to have C, a solution of sugar in acetone. Okay, all right. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Uh, these next ones are a little bit more straightforward and a little easier. So two says based on the table above, which solvent had the highest rate of diffusion? So first, the only thing we really need to know is having a high rate of diffusion is what? Dissolving quickly or dissolving slowly? First of all, we need to know that it's dissolving quickly, right? Then it's just a matter of finding the one that takes the least amount of time to reach equilibrium. And the right answer is formic acid. It took 15 minutes to reach equilibrium, which means that it was dissolving sugar the fastest. Simple as that, okay? Now, number three deals with a quick math problem. And for those of you that have a calculator, you can kind of follow along. Um, but we will talk about mean, median, mode, and range um, later this week because that is definitely something you need to know on the science test. You need to make sure you know those mean, median, mode. Okay. All right. So number three says, based on this table, calculate the average time, the mean, Average time required for the solvents to reach equilibrium. So, if you don't know what average is or mean is, and you don't know how to calculate it, then it's pretty hard, right? To calculate the average of something or the mean, you have to add up all of the different data entries, which in this case is the time it's for all of these different solvents. You would add them all up. And then we have to, to find the average, we take that total and we divide it by how many different data entries there are. And there are one, two, three, four entries. So if we do 20, 
75, plus 18, plus 15, we get 78. And if we take 78 and divide it by 4, we end up with 19.5, which makes sense because it's kind of right in the middle of all these numbers. So that's where, you know, when, when people use the word average a lot to kind of mean generally about what something is, but in math or in science, average means something very specific. Specific. Add up all of the data, divide it by how many different entries there are, and that's how you get average. So there is going to be some math on the science test. Fair warning. Answer for this one, 19.5. And then my last question, and again, like I had mentioned, this is kind of a short little lesson, um, but if you have questions on this and you want to follow up with me, um, just ask me next time you're in science class and we can kind of cl clear up some of this stuff. Um, number four says, osmosis is the reason why it's unhealthy and potentially dangerous to drink seawater. If you drink seawater, which contains high concentration of salts and other dissolved material, some of the dissolved material will be absorbed in your bloodstream, causing your blood to have a higher than normal concentration of dissolved material. As that blood circulates, your body, water will move from your body's tissues into your blood vessels, causing your tissues to lose water and dry out. So that's why you, it's dangerous to drink salt water because it can dry out your tissue. The question says, fill in the blank with one of the choices. Based on the information above, your tissues will would begin to lose water and dry out when your blood has a level of dissolved material Blank, that of your body's tissue. Okay, greater than, less than, So, again, not an easy question. Not an easy concept to necessarily understand if you don't have any background knowledge. One thing I'll say, the first thing we can say for sure is that it's not going to be equivalent, okay? Because if both sides are equivalent, then nothing's going to be changed. So it won't make any sense that our tissues would begin to lose water and dry out when our blood has the same level of dissolved material as our body's tissue. That doesn't make any sense. Okay. So it's either going to be greater than or it's going to be less than. And if we look up here, it says seawater contains a high concentration of salt and other dissolved materials. Some of the dissolved material will be absorbed into your bloodstream, causing your blood to have a higher than normal concentration of dissolved material. That's the key right there, right? So the answer is greater than, right? Uh, just reading quickly out of the book, and it says, according to the passage, water will flow from your tissues into your blood. For that to be an example of osmosis, it must be the case that the water is flowing from a place, your tissues, where the concentration of dissolved material is lower, to a place, your blood vessels, where it is higher. Thus, the tissues will start to dry out, and the amount of dissolved material in your blood vessels is greater than that in your tissues. So again, diffusion and osmosis, this is all stuff that I talk about when we get into talking about um, uh, somewhere in chemistry we talk about. I can't remember exactly. We spend a couple days going off. So if this is a, a tough concept to, to grasp just kind of on the fly, it's okay. We'll spend some more time talking about this later. Uh, I, and I again, I know that that is a pretty brief 15 minute um, science class, but uh, I think just for the purposes of keeping things simple and starting a new topic tomorrow, I'm going to go ahead and, and stop there for the day and pick up where we left off tomorrow. Uh, so hopefully, if you're watching this on the YouTube channel, um, it is somewhat helpful. And again, if you have questions or this is confusing, uh, just mention it to me when you're in science class next, and we can try to explain some of this stuff uh, a little more. But um, again, with that, I'm going to just talk for the day, and uh, I'll see you all next time. Have a good one. All right. Later.